Hi there, my name is Jessica Brogley. I am completing the last assignment in Module 3 of the ISTE certification course. In that final assignment, we are to create a digital artifact, hence this video, that introduces a uh, tool, resource, an application that uh, supports learning in an alternative environment. I think I have a really good example. So I teach at the University of Wisconsin Platteville in the School of Education, almost exclusively courses in educational technology. This summer, I will be taking about 30 students uh, to learn uh, the value and how to use educational technology to be able to curate resources for their classroom, uh, to be able to tell great digital stories, to be able to um, shape uh, the map in which they live and travel. Uh, and so we will be doing that in the United Kingdom. And that's, uh, that's what I'm kind of uh, freaking out about. So it's, a, it's the same educational technology course that I teach in Platteville, Wisconsin, but we will be doing some slight tweaks and then uplifting it and sending it over to the United Kingdom for two weeks. And so um, that's really uh, quite the alternative learning environment. <laughs> and I will be using the tool, which I'm gonna talk about, uh, the Google Local Guides program. And that's such a weird tool to pick, but I happen to believe in it uh, so wholeheartedly and it's really impacted my line of thinking as an educator. And so uh, you have to be 18 to use it. So my colleagues that teach in the K-12 wouldn't probably talk about this one. Uh, however, I teach all pre-service teachers. They're all above 18 years old. And it really will impact how they see their ability and power to collaborate and to share content with the whole wide world that they can use in their classrooms later, but also other people. So for example, we can upload content to Google Maps and then use that later, years from now, in a Google uh, Tour Creator project that's visible in Google Expeditions. And so all of that gets started in this course um, with the Google Local Guides program. So I thought I would show you what it looks like on my phone. So I have joined years ago and I've downloaded the Maps app and uh, there, there we are. So I'm gonna click the three pancakes in the top left corner and go to your contributions. And so this gives you an idea of just how the local guides program works. So basically I upload content, uh, photos, videos, I answer questions, I make corrections, I add roads, things like that. And uh, I receive points from Google for doing that. And uh, sure, I get the digital badges, which are kind of cool, but eventually I start receiving perks like discounts on Google Play um, Music and movies. And even I entered a, um, uh, uh, I submitted a portfolio to, to go to Google Connect Live in San, Di San Jose and I was selected. And so yes, there are uh, the mindset rewards for me, but also there, ha there have been some financial benefits too. So um, once you get the local guides program going and you've downloaded the Maps app, here you go, uh, in, you turn on location settings, right? So it tracks your, you don't have to, but it's easier. Uh, it will start to um, notice where you go and then offer you the opportunity to leave reviews and photos. And uh, then you're able to check facts un and uncover mis uh, missing info. So in a nutshell, you get to contribute on Google Maps. Your work helps shape the map. Pretty cool. So I'm gonna click back and I wanna go back into that just to show you. Um, so I'm at 15,000 points, which in this graphic looks pretty pathetic. However, that took me years to get. That's actually really hard. And I have uploaded uh, a lot of content over time. So just under 1,800 photos, over 500 which are 360 images. I really want my viewers that, that visit Southwest Wisconsin to be able to see in 360 the places that Google Street View haven't driven by yet, right? So uh, think of it that way. Like if you could tell the story of the places you live and travel in locations that Google Street View haven't been to, would you do that? Of course you would, that's amazing. And that's what I want my students to realize too. So they'll be joining the Google Local Guides program. 
and we'll have access to do these types of things. I will be giving them to use, well, of course they'll have their own smartphones, but I will also give them an Insta360 camera and a Pocket Osmo to be able to take video. Uh, so to answer the questions in this assignment, how would I model this for colleagues? I have lived and breathed this for a couple years now and wholeheartedly believe in that this is an outstanding tool to not only change my mindset on how I, in little Podunkville, Southwest Wisconsin, can contribute to something global. That's pretty important. It makes, I, I, have, um, I have felt really proud about being able to do that. Um, so I will model that for my colleagues. Two, how will I investigate it collaboratively with my students? Uh, the semester before, they better learn it, right? So we are going to go side by side and head out into the wilderness of Southwest Wisconsin and start taking photos and leaving reviews and editing the map uh, so they can kind of get the hang of how it works and understand too that they really do have the power to be able to do this kind of work wherever they live, work, travel, play, etc. Three, how might I use it to promote digital citizenship or empower student learning? <laughs> this is an excellent tool to promote digital citizenship. I want my students to know that they have the power to be able to do works of good online, to be able to leverage technology to, um, to influence the map in a positive way and to tell stories about the land, people, and history of wherever they're traveling. Now, what about promoting, uh, empowering student learning? Uh, that kind of comes hand in hand with what I just said, doesn't it? It, it um, being able to understand that they are active contributors to a global project, that's pretty empowering. And I'm hoping that they are motivated to do that work and to tell those stories and uh, then they'll have that for their classroom use years to come. I can scroll back in my work uh, years ago to be able to see what I wrote and photographed. That's pretty cool. Uh, four, how can I use this tool to transform my work with colleagues and their students? Um, the Google Local Guides program has really changed how I see myself as a, a, a global contributor. I never really thought I was until I started this work, and I'm so thankful that I bumped into this. Uh, initially, it was just um, because I just am, I'm that person that checked into Foursquare all the time, <laughs> and I leave reviews on Yelp back in the day. Uh, so I get that I'm just wired that way, but this has really made me think that I actually have the power to contribute to the most um, versatile uh, location tool, Google Maps and I get to help out. I love that. And lastly, um, which ISTE standards might be met by, this, by its use? <sighs> Depending on how you use it as a teacher, uh, you, could, you could hit every standard, but the, one that, the ones that stick with me the most are probably the global, the, the, uh, the global standards, really, that idea that I am sharing content with the world, that someone all the way across the planet can see my work. Uh, I My photos have over 6 million views. That's insane to me. Uh, but thanks to Google Maps, I'm able to like realize that I have that ability um, with a with a smartphone. We all have that power in our hands, right? So I want my students to realize that they can do it and where they go and um, that everything they collect is can become a digital story and that um, that can be used later on in their classrooms, not only by them, but their students. Um, so again, uh, that tool that I'm referring to is called the Google Local Guides Program. Uh, it's, not, it's not part of the suite, the Google for EDU suite. It's, it's something for just any old Joe to use. Uh, however, the classroom use uh, is, is very bountiful. So uh, there you go. That's my digital artifact for Module 3.